Hello and welcome at our GCP Mindset channel. Today we have a medical topic. We speak about clinical research in dermatology. And it's my pleasure to introduce to you Professor Jörn Elsner. He's, he's an expert in dermatology. And yeah, let's discuss. Yeah, thank you very much, Andreas, that you invite me to your institution. So I'm looking forward for our discussion today and I am happy to tell you the topics of dermatology. Great, thanks. Jörn, once again, thank you very much for being here to speak with me about clinical research and dermatology. I mean, I think it's a very important topic because the skin is very, it's a large organ um, of the human body. And in the moment, everybody speaks just about COVID and nobody yeah. speaks about other diseases. So thanks for being here. And let's start first with yeah. you. Yeah, you are an expert. You do it for a long time, um, focusing on dermatology. Please tell me a little bit more about you. Yes, nowadays I'm just working about 25 years in dermatology research and clinic. And it was a very interesting field when it started because the dermatology and the allergology uh, scientific work has been so expired and therefore um, I'm very enthusiastic to have all the uh, topics which we can discuss today. So at the beginning uh, in the, at, at the University of uh, Hanover, uh, I have done research in granulocytes which were really important for different inflammatory diseases. And afterwards, I w uh, changed uh, to the Freiburg University, to the skin uh, department. The research work at the University of Freiburg has dealt with granulocytes, but not only for neutrophils, also for eosinophils. And these are the big player in allergic uh, diseases. And in the meantime, we investigated different uh, effector function in these cells. For example, how to influence the income of the cells into the tissue. And therefore, we investigated different antagonists uh, of the inflammatory responses in allergic and in inflammatory diseases. And after my uh, chief changed from uh, um, Freiburg to Hanover Medical School. I changed with them together and there I had a very big uh, research group in which we investigated uh, the interaction of eosinophils and pharmacological um, uh, properties. I have a lot of experiences in clinical research because we have a lot of patients with psoriasis, atopic dermatitis, skin cancer, and also people with uh, aesthetic problems. Okay, yeah, that's what I know from you actually, uh, that you have a very nice connection between the clinical work and clinical research, so scientific work actually. And I know you as a mm. very passionate medical doctor who is uh, still reading a lot of papers, and uh, mm. try to be as up to date as possible. Uh, that's great. What would you s consider as the most three hot topics in dermatology? So in, in which direction clinical research will move us? So nowadays we have three different topics. So we have the inflammatory diseases, we have the skin cancer, and we have the aesthetic dermatology. And uh, the knowledge is very increased in the last couple of uh, years. So in the past we had only creams in dermatology. And nowadays we have target therapy in skin cancer and in inflammatory uh, diseases such as psoriasis and allergic uh, diseases uh, such as urticaria and atopic dermatitis. And this is very increasing uh, the field and the compounds which are on the market today for the therapy of the patients in uh, these uh, diseases. And in, in addition to the other fields which I have uh, already mentioned, there's also a problem of the people with their looking. 
they want to look very young and therefore we have the aesthetic medicine which have also um, developed a lot of new uh, uh, drugs and compounds uh, which we can use for example the botulinum toxins but also the filler compounds the hyaluronic acid and this is a very big field uh, now yeah okay very interesting so let's speak a little bit more in detail uh, step by step mm -hmm. um, let's start with skin cancer I, I, I think skin cancer is the most most uh, life-threatening disease of all these three fields you, you just told mm -hmm. me um, and according to my feeling it's also very much underestimated because it's very dangerous but still um, the risk is just ignored by many people. Is it just my feeling or is it really the case? Yes, it's, it's really the case because in the, or at the beginning uh, the people don't feel that they have cancer. They have different lesions on their skin but they uh, think about it when the lesion is uh, coming alone they also uh, go away alone and so they wait till they go to the medical doctor and most of the medical doctors have not the knowledge about the skin uh, cancer and therefore we have the problem that the people go too late to the dermatologist. Yeah. And I think most of the people know that sun is not very good for the skin and it's, it's a risk factor for skin cancer um, and the prevalence is still increasing so it's just ignored. When I checked actually the prevalence rates, um, what was surprising for me is that some Nordic countries like Denmark and Norway are quite high um, on, on their rates. Can you explain that? I think there's a simple explanation because the people from northern countries, they enjoy the sun when they came out. And when they have the first sun uh, after, uh, after the winter time, they go into the sun, they show their face into the sun and they are looking forward to the sunny days. And therefore we have a difference between the people from southern countries. They have the sun all the days, even uh, in the spring and autumn, but not the northern countries. And therefore uh, the very uh, high uh, and intensive exposition to sunlight is, in my opinion, a more uh, important factor for skin cancer than the continuous sun uh, exposure from the uh, southern um, countries people. Okay, that's interesting. It's very simple, yeah? Mm -hmm. um, well, Let's speak about the treatment of skin cancer. What is um, currently the, the standard of care treatment? Yeah, we, we have nowadays so many new therapies and we can say it's a revolution of the therapy, particularly for the non-melanoma skin cancer but also for the um, malignant melanoma. Yeah. For example, we have the photogenomic therapy for non-melanoma skin cancer. It's a very interesting therapy. Um, in which you combine laser therapy and topical compounds which uh, remove all the precursors of the white skin cancer or the non-melanoma skin cancer. So it's very important to investigate the patients not only for different molds but I think it's more important to look for the non-melanoma skin cancer because it's more commune and they, the people ignore the, uh, when they have the non-melanoma skin cancer. And uh, this is a, there's a, a direct correlation between non-melanoma skin cancer, the so-called white skin cancer, and the precursors to sunlight. And um, therefore we have to uh, keep uh, care on these patients. Okay, but the more dangerous skin cancer, how is that treated? Uh, it's uh, the, the most dangerous uh, skin cancer is the malignant melanoma. But uh, nowadays we have 
a very good therapies. All of you uh, know Jimmy Carter, the yeah. former president of the United States, and he has a very severe malignant melanoma, and uh, he has been treated with the new uh, therapies, immunomodulation therapies with the antibodies. And uh, nowadays he is still living. So it's a very fantastic therapy which we uh, have developed uh, for the malignant uh, melanoma. So in the past the people died when they have uh, mel melanoma cells in the brain. But today we can treat uh, the patients and they uh, are still alive. Yeah, it's fantastic. Yeah, it is fantastic. But still, I think we need to highlight that's still life-threatening, and it cannot be ignored. So they, people should go to the dermatologist yeah. to get a good treatment as fast as possible. Oh. Yeah, that, that's a really um, important point because we can check the people uh, with a dermatoscope for the whole skin investigation, and we have the experiences. Uh, the other general medicine uh, doctors, they don't have the experiences because every uh, skin lesion looks the same for, yeah. for these doctors. Yeah. And we can distinguish with our knowledge and our experiences uh, which kind of skin lesion is dangerous or not. Okay, that makes sense. Um, as second important topic, you mentioned allergic and inflammatory diseases. Can you tell me a little bit more about that? Yes, Andreas. There's an increased compounds which we have now for the treatment of allergic and inflammatory diseases. You know, in the past, the dermatologic therapy uh, was only to use a cream for example, for psoriasis and to wait when the psoriasis uh, will go better. But today we have so many compounds, the biologics, systemic therapy, and therefore the uh, dermatological uh, therapy is not the cream, but the systemic therapy. Okay. Uh, but as far as I know, these treatments are quite expensive, correct? So you are right, the biological therapy are expensive, but this is not the therapy uh, which we start uh, from psoriasis, for example, or in atopic dermatitis. Uh, normally, we start the therapy with a, a death a sea salt, uh, UBB light therapy. It's also a very good uh, therapy which helps to reduce uh, the skin lesions in atopic dermatitis, but also in psoriasis. And when the people are not getting better after this therapy, we uh, decide uh, to uh, um, treat the patients with a biological uh, therapy, for example. Okay, yeah. I think that also underlines once again how important it is that we do further clinical research to have more products on the market, because better and, and more alternatives would also decrease the, the price for the patients. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think that's a uh, um, very interesting point because if you have uh, different uh, compounds to treat the systemic therapy in psoriasis and also in allergic diseases, uh, then you have a, uh, you can uh, decrease uh, the costs for the therapy. Okay, and when you say that's uh, the second most important topic for you, why is that the case? Is it just to improve the quality of life of these patients? The improvement of the quality of life is one point, but the other more important point in inflammatory and also in chronic allergic diseases is that they have an increased risk for arteriosclerosis and therefore for uh, stroke and heart attacks. And therefore, it's not only a cosmetic problem to reduce the psoriasis lesions or the lesions of the atopic eczema. So when we treat the patients, they have fewer inflammatory response and then we decrease their risk for the uh, more important uh, side effects 
the, the stroke and the heart attacks. Okay, yeah. So uh, it's even a preventive therapy. Yeah, it's. Um, I think this is not the right uh, explanation, but uh, from the uh, uh, results of the research in the last 10 years, we have found that uh, the inflammatory uh, tissue is one of the uh, main risk factor okay. to, to develop uh, these uh, severe uh, you know, heart attack and okay. uh, a stroke. Yeah, okay, interesting. Okay, let's jump now to the last topic you said, it's aesthetic medicine and, and you as a medical doctor and dermatologist, uh, I'm wondering why you consider this as a third topic. I mean, it's not life-threatening, it's, it's, um, there's a demand for sure, yeah? people want to look younger, fresher, mm. um, and is that the reason why you say that's the third topic, because the demand is so high? Yes. There are a lot of people, they want to look younger, they, they want to have a fresh uh, view and uh, therefore also in, in, in the medical, uh, in, in the um, uh, in media, in the media. Uh, and also in, in the media, for example in the YouTube uh, uh, videos, the influencers, they all say, oh you have to be young, you have to uh, have a very young uh, looking and uh, therefore the people come to us and they say oh I have too many wrinkles so I want to uh, look younger what can uh, we do uh, or what can you do for me yeah and um, therefore because we are the dermatologists and therefore it's very important that we treat the patients and that the patients do not go to a cosmetic institute where um, cosmetic people uh, 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 give different compounds and I think it's better uh, when the dermatologist uh, inject for example the botulinum toxin or the filler substances because we have more experiences with the anatomy uh, of the face than a cosmetic person. Yeah. Yeah, I think the risk of um, incorrect treatment is also underestimated. Yes, they don't have the experience uh, of the side effects. What are you doing uh, with the bleeding when you inject uh, botulinum or a filler and you have injured a uh, blood vessel and then you have a very big bleeding? Now, there's one complication. Another one is that you have a granulomous uh, reaction of the skin and very painful areas and therefore the dermatologists have the experience because they know the anatomy because we make all the surgeries also in the face we know what kind of structures are in the face and how to treat the right compound for the wrinkles and for the uh, different um, areas in the face so that also means that when these cosmetic staff are making mistakes, people are coming to you and you need to treat them afterwards, correct? Yes, yeah. that's very often. For example, they have permanent makeup and we have to use our laser systems to remove the permanent makeup or to inject a special enzyme to remove the compounds which they injected yeah. into the skin. So they should come directly to you. Yeah. yeah. I think this is better yeah. to go firstly to the dermatologist and not to the uh, cosmetic uh, staff. Okay. You spoke already about drugs like uh, Botox, just one example, everybody knows that. Then you spoke about dermal fillers, with, which are medical devices, lasers, uh, you mentioned already. What kind of medical devices are you? Um, using as well? Yes, uh, laser therapy is one of the most uh, topic which we use in, in our uh, department because you can remove so many different skin lesions. You can also use the laser for the drug delivery for example. 
the so-called uh, Fraxel laser uh, method. Um, because you can um, use this uh, laser uh, to uh, um, make uh, little holes in, into the skin and then the compound, the drug, uh, penetrate better and deeper into the skin. And for example, uh, this therapy, the drug delivery therapy we use in onychomycosis and in fungal infection of the nails and in um, non-melanoma skin cancer, for example, uh, the uh, carcinoma in situ of the face and uh, basal cell carcinoma. Okay, cool. Yeah. So that uh, you make sure that the drug is coming where it's really needed. Yes, yeah. because normally you put uh, the compound only onto the skin, sure. but it doesn't work uh, yeah. uh, in the same way. And um, when you have um, the compound deeper in, in the skin, it works really better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Great. Thank you very much, Jörn. It was extremely interesting. And I think dermatology is uh, it's actually an underestimated yeah. field. I think many people take better care of their car than of their skin, yeah. Yeah, unfortunately. Um, and it's so interesting. And we still have so much to do in clinical research to mm -hmm. make treatments better. Thank you very much for, for uh, all your insights. Yeah, thank you very much, Andreas. Yeah. It was nice to talk to you. Yeah. I hope that also you liked our video. Yeah, send us your comments, um, leave your questions, and see you the next time. Bye bye.